Does your blender viewport struggle like this? Then the technique I'm going to show you in this video is going to make your blender viewport lag free and buttery smooth. And the best part is that it only takes a few minutes to set up. Here's the problem. So here I've got these trees and these are really high poly. And I'm distributing these trees on this plane using this really simple geometry node setup. I've also reduced the density by a lot just to be safe. And if you don't know how to use geometry nodes, then you can watch my geometry nodes for beginners tutorial series by clicking the i button or by following the link down in the description box below. In the distribute points on faces node, I've also changed the distribution type from random to poison. poison? In English, it is generally pronounced as Poisson, Poisson <laughs> distribution, for example. So I've also changed the distribution type to Poisson, <laughs> Poisson disk. And when you do that, you also get this new distance minimum value. And what it does is it eliminates any points if they are closer to each other in that range. So when the distance minimum is set to 2 meters, no two points can be closer to each other in two meters and yeah it's very much like social distancing then i'm instancing this tree's collection and all of these three check boxes have to be ticked because if they are not your scene will be messed up so separating the children makes the objects of the collection to be treated each individually then we want to reset the children to reset all of the transformations. Then we also want to pick the instance because when we don't, you can see that there are two objects at the same point. So picking the instance means that each point will only use one object from that collection. And that's what we want. So here's the idea, we want to replace these high poly objects with low poly objects in the viewport and in the renders the high poly objects will be visible. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and created a really low poly version of our tree and as you can see that this is really low poly and I've also given it a green material. Now what we want to do is we want to replace these high poly trees collection by this object. So the first step is to get that object in our node tree. To get that object in our node tree, we can either add an object info node and select that object or there's a much faster way and that is to just drag and drop this object from the outliner into our node tree. Now what we want to do is we want to replace this collection with this object in the viewport. So to replace something, we can add a node called, and by the way, if you didn't know, you can click and hold down and add a node by just typing it in. So we want to add the switch node. And we have to plug this collection into the false socket of the switch node. Now let's plug the output into the instance. Now, when the switch is off, it's using this false input, which is our collection. When we switch it on, it's using the true input, which is at the time, nothing. So, let's plug this object info node into the true socket. Now, you'll see that nothing has happened, and that is because it's giving an error that realized geometry is not used when peak instance is true. So, let me explain. Here, we have peak the instance because we are using a collection. But we don't have to pick the instance when we are using just an object because it's a single object. It makes sense, right? So if your scene doesn't have a collection but it's only using two objects, let me show you, like this, then you don't even need to pick the instance. But in my case, I, I want to replace a collection by an object, so I have to pick the instance. Then in the object info node, we can simply turn on this as instance option. And ta-da, it's working. But we don't want to switch it off every time when we hit the render button. 
and we don't want to switch it on either when we are in the viewport because you know what humans are very lazy so what we can do is we can add an input called the is viewport what it does is it outputs a value between 0 and 1 so when we are in the viewport it outputs a value of 1 and if you didn't know in computers 0 means off and 1 means on so when it's outputting a value of 1 the switch is on and it's using our low poly object and when we are not in the viewport it outputs a value of 0 that means the switch will be off and it will use our original collection how cool is that so this is the technique and it's that easy to set up but i'm going to show you a bonus tip wouldn't it be nice if we had a percentage value of the density that we can control in the viewport so when it's set to 50 percent it's showing us the 50 percent of the total density in the viewport but in the render the 100 percent of the density will be used and we can also do that really easily and it also does is speed up the viewport significantly but before i do that i don't really like when the density is set to a really low amount like 0 0.005 we have a lot of trees okay they are not a lot but they are quite a few so what i'm going to do is i'm going to plug this density max in the group input node by just typing that in and now we can control that value from the geometry nodes modifier now that we have got this input, we can modify it. So let's add a math node and don't panic, we are not going to do anything complex. But before plugging this in, I'm going to change the math node to multiply. Now we can plug this math node here. Now it's multiplying this density by this low value and that makes it even lower. So I'm going to set this value to a really low amount, something like 0 0.005. Now there are no trees. So let's increase the density to something like 5. Now that's really good. Now to get that percentage value for the viewport density, what we can do is we can duplicate this math multiply node and plug that here. Now when this value is set to 1, it's exactly the same because if you multiply something by 1, it will be the same number. And when this is set to 0, there's nothing visible because when we multiply something by zero the output is zero as well so the effect is already kind of working we just need to tweak it so first of all we don't want this to affect the render but we only want this to affect the viewport so what we are going to do now is we are going to add a node and you guessed it it's the switch node and we want to plug this into the false socket so this is the actual density and this is the node that we'll use to control the percentage of our density. So let's plug this multiply node into the true socket. Now let's use the output for the density. And because we want this to affect the viewport and this the render, what we are going to do is we are going to again add the is viewport node. Now when we increase this value above 1, the instances also keep getting increasing but we don't want that as we don't want the density to go above 100 percent so we want this value to be only from 0 to 1 so we can add a clamp node now whatever the value will be the output will only range from a minimum value of 0 to a maximum value of 1 that's exactly what we want as you can see right now if we increase this value above 1 the instances don't increase at all now we could just plug this value into the group input node but i'm not going to do that i'm going to show you guys a hack so if we add a mix node the mix rgb node has now been changed to mix in blender 3.4 now we have the option to mix a float a vector or a color but that's not what we are interested in we are interested in this vector slider what i'm going to do now is i'm going to plug this into the group input node and now we have this factor value here but what i'm going to do now is i'm going to delete this mix node but this factor slider will still be there now we can use this factor slider for this value now we have this factor slider which is really awesome <gasps> 
but we want this value to go from 0 to 100 like a percentage value. And we can remap the values by pressing N to open up the sidebar. Now here in group, we can change all of these values for these inputs. First of all, I'm going to rename this density max input to density and this factor value to viewport density percentage. Now we can set this max value to 100. Then we can increase this value all the way to 100. But nothing will change. So what's happening right now is when this value is increased above 1, the value is clamped to 1. But instead of clamping the value, what we want is we want this value to become 0 to 1, not clamped. So what we can do is here we can add a math node, set it to divide and divide this value by a hundred. So when we multiply hundred by hundred, it will become one. As you can see right now that this is working and we no longer need this clamp node, but I recommend to keep it just for safety reasons. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to set the default value to 50. So when we reset this value by right clicking on it and resetting it to the default value, it will be set to 50. Now here's another bonus tip for you guys and it's really quick. Before doing that, I'm going to set the viewport density to a really low amount like 10. Now here, let's duplicate the switch node and change the switch mode from geometry to boolean. And if you don't know what's a boolean, a boolean is a value which is either 0 or 1. Turn on the switch and plug this is viewport into the true socket. Now if we plug the output into the switch, we can use this, we can use this switch to toggle between the real objects and the proxies. You can also plug this into the group input node. Now you can control it from here. I'm going to rename this to enable proxy. So when this is set to 0, the proxy is not enabled as 0 means off and when this is set to 1, the proxy is enabled, which is really cool as well. Now it's the moment of truth. Let's see if it works or not by rendering the image. So I'm going to increase the density to 10. I'm going to leave the viewport density to 10 and now let's go to camera view and let's render out the image. A few moments later. As you can see that this is working. This is the render and this is the viewport. Now that you've got your scene set up but you don't know how to light up your scenes. So for that watch this video. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos and tutorials just like this. I'll be back.